Good afternoon, Ray. You must be absolutely exhausted. I cannot imagine. For 24,000 of your closest friends descending on Toronto next week for PDAC, what are you doing to get ready? I, I looked it up, and it's not only the biggest uh, annual convention in Toronto, it's the biggest annual convention in Canada. I thought the petroleum guys might have had one up on us, but they only get 5,000 people. Oh, I'm not surprised. I think I've been to every event in the world. <laughs> And speaking of events, I was reviewing your background to become the president of PDAC is a very auspicious title. Takes a, you've got to have an incredible educational background and your background is formidable and it starts in New Zealand. How did you end up as the president of PDAC, Ray? That's a two part question, Tracy. The first is how did I get to leave New Zealand and come here, and secondly, once I was here, how did I get to become president? So to answer the first part, uh, what motivated my journey from New Zealand it was a redhead. And she and I are delighted that our first newborn grandchild has red hair. And the second part is, why did I become president? Well, I, I think you noted one of the places I studied was at Queen's University in Kingston, and a group of us there uh, got together and said, we geology students should go down to Toronto and there's something called the PDAC there. What's the PDAC? Prospectors and Developers Association of Canada Convention. You've got to go. That's where you get your summer jobs. And uh, everyone I, I met at the convention was courteous, kind, and helpful, and I resolved that I wanted to be courteous, kind, and helpful to those who followed me. And that, as a result, I'm a big supporter of PDAC's student and early career program, which is a very important part of PDAC's work, uh, given that we need more people to come into this business. And it's not only something that happens at convention, it's the uh, career and early, uh, the early career and student program goes throughout the year. One of the most notable uh, events is uh, in May, I think it is, the uh, Student Industry Mineral Exploration Workshop, where we take students from across Canada and tell them what it's really like to be an exploration geologist. Okay, well, so midterm reflections, since you have become president, what would you say is your greatest challenge so far and what would you say is your greatest achievement? Once, once you've been elected as president, there's, there's a very well-planned and rigorous uh, procedure to follow before you eventually step into those big shoes left by past presidents. And uh, the first part of the procedure is that it re required me to serve as second vice president, which is a position that also required me to assume uh, ex officio the role of the chair of the governance and nominating committee. And then the next step is you serve as first vice president for two more years, and finally you become the president. And my biggest accomplishments actually occurred in those earlier years uh, as second vice president, because uh, the, as the chair of the governance and nominating committee, uh, I reviewed, revised, updated the PDAC's numerous policies and constating documents, as the lawyers call them. And then in the top part, I, I got the board to approve the changes that I'd made. And uh, I was honored in this, in this task to work with many other people, staff and volunteers, but most notably Karen Reese, who was my successor as chair of the Governance and Nominating Committee, and who will next year be my successor as PDAC president. And I was also part of the group that led by Alex Christopher, uh, the previous president who created and implemented PDAC's strategic plan for 2023 to 2028. And so what I and my colleagues accomplished in the governance area, defining and refining our policies and procedures has provided a clear pathway to accompanying, to uh, accomplishing PDAC's purposes. And you mentioned challenges and issues. Well, they continue to be, and they are well addressed by those documents that uh, I reviewed. They continue to be for our members, ensuring for them access to land, 
access to capital and access to skilled people. Well, I certainly, it certainly sounds like you deserve the role as president. Um, trends and innovations, from your perspective, Ray, what are the emerging trends within the global mineral exploration and mining industry as you see it as the PDAC president? Well, probably, Tracy, I, I've been overly influenced in this by talking to uh, investors in, in U.S. equities who have been just ecstatic about the amount of money that they have made on the magnificent seven technology companies. But it, it turns out that the, the most important of the uh, trends and innovations relate to technology. Uh, for, firstly, advances in technology are actually helping explorationists do their job. We now use drones for exploration. Uh, there's a, a growing availability of fast and cheap chemical and mineralogical uh, analysis of exploration samples. But I, I think of uh, when I used to log core with a microscope and, uh, and a pen, nowadays it'll be a geologist, she'll be using an app on her phone to, to log that drill core. Uh, we've seen automation of engineering and monitoring health and the introduction of machine learning and artificial intelligence applications improve efficiencies and safety, and in fact, are uh, targeting for us new discoveries as well as tracking our environmental footprints. So that's one influence of technology on those trends and innovations. The other one is that technology is creating new demands for the minerals that we're looking for, notably critical minerals. Uh, for, for example, if you come to the, uh, the PDAC, and I hope you do at the, at the end of this week, more than a thousand exhibitors. One of those exhibits will be something called the Arrow Project. It's a, a concept vehicle put together by Canada's automotive parts industry to illustrate that what we have here in Canada are all of the materials needed to create vehicles that are free of emissions. And you can go up to this vehicle and touch it. All right. You know I am the founder of the Critical Minerals Institute. <laughs> I have to ask you for one more line on the critical minerals sector, if you wouldn't mind. What kind of uh, influence are you seeing uh, from investors that you've been talking about in the critical minerals sector? Well, one of the uh, critical minerals issues that uh, I think a lot, of, a lot of attention has been has not been paid to the downstream processing. So I'm delighted that the governments of Canada and other countries recognize that often the key to critical minerals isn't the geology of the deposit as it sits in the ground. Uh, for example, I'll hear uh, a, uh, a promoter say, look, I've got the, the, the best critical minerals property in the world, high grade, large, so I'm definitely in the critical minerals business. Well, maybe you're not because that statement reminds me or makes me think of uh, a farmer farmer who says, hey, I've got a great field of barley and a great field of, of rye, so I'm in the whiskey business. But the value added in the whiskey business is all the downstream processing. And it's very much that case in critical minerals as well. I, I really appreciate that. Thank you, Ray. And I think it's a, a perfect bridge to the topic of sustainability and future outlook. Considering the growing emphasis on sustainability and responsible mining pr practices, we know PDAC is a leadership. Can you talk to us about the future directions as you envision for the industry and PDAC's role within it, please? Well, wow, that's that's our future you're, you're talking about, Tracy. And well, I guess for a start, the, the convention is a great uh, venue for companies to tell the world about their sustainable and responsible mining practices. And uh, in particular, this year we have uh, integrated topics like uh, industry, community, and indigenous cooperation. We even have one on how to deal with forest fires and that, how that ties in with indigenous cooperation and, and mineral exploration led by indigenous people. So that those are some of the special uh, looks at sustainability at convention. But outside the convention, uh, as you alluded to, we were pioneers of uh, sustainable exploration and development and we produced a product, an uh, online product. Uh, well, if you print it out, it's about this much paper. Uh, it's called E3 Plus, and it was the first guide to uh, 
mining companies or exploration companies to how to be responsible in exploration. And we've now updated E3 Plus and we're relaunching it at the convention under its new brand name, DRE, Driving Responsible Exploration. And, and I suppose you could include as part of the PDAC's involvement in sustainability, uh, government advocacy work, because uh, it's the uh, our advocacy work has been one of the reasons why Canada's federal government has implemented the Critical Minerals Exploration Tax Credit, the Critical Minerals Infrastructure and Processing Fund, and the Clean Manufacturing Input Tax Credit. Advice for young professionals, right? What would you tell them going to PDAC? Would you say start in our technology section? I mean, it is a huge program. I think uh, I turned one of your uh, your online uh, pieces of information into 88 pages, just trying to assess which booths I need to make time to go to. What advice do you have for the young professionals and for us older professionals? Probably the shortest, I would say, look, in, in order to give you the kind of perspective you need to accommodate, for example, on then on a, on a Tuesday, I counted there's some 17 parallel technical sessions. So to help you understand which ones of those you should be attending, why don't you apply to be part of the 2025 Student Industry Mineral Exploration Workshop, or SIMU? So that's one answer. And another answer is, well, bring a friend to convention. You go to some of the uh, the presentations and uh, and your friend goes to others and you, and you talk afterwards. Uh, about what you've seen and, and learned from that. But I think the most important thing about bringing a friend to convention or telling them about what you learned at convention is, well, I, I've heard of students who've sighed, if only I'd known that in mining exploration, you get to see parts of the world that Instagram has never been. You get to ride, ride in helicopters through beautiful terrain and you learn how to care for yourself in the wilderness. I'm so pissed off with myself that last year I took a summer job in the city. Next year, I want to do it out in, out in the bush working in exploration. Ray, I can't thank you enough for your time. We want to wish you a lot of health. Uh, extra, what is all the vitamins that you need to handle the energy and saying hello to 24,000 people? And uh, thank you so much for allowing us to participate. I think we counted over four dozen publicly listed companies in the critical mineral sector just in our roster that we'll be attending. And we look forward to, to seeing you and participating PDAC 2024. Thank you.